In the previous video I showed you how to read these bead crochet ball patterns and in this video I will show you how to crochet a ball according to this pattern. So uh, we will need a pattern. Uh, you can find the link to download the pattern in PDF in the video description down below. Uh, then it is great to have some bead mat. You can also make it yourself. I made this one from an IKEA frame. You can find a link to the tutorial up here. To be able to string the beads we will need a big eye needle, uh, some thread. Suitable threads for bead crochet can be found in my Etsy shop. If you don't have any or you are not sure which one to use. I sell the ones that I have tested myself and they are suitable. This is one of them. Then we will need a hook of course. I use a very small hook of size 0.5 mm for most projects. Uh, generally for bead crochet I recommend using hooks in the range of about 0.5 to 1 mm. With larger hooks it usually doesn't work very well or you can see a lot of thread between the beads. Definitely scissors. Then we will uh, need color markers, so I will make them. I will need markers of three colors according to this pattern. Pink, green and red. I discussed uh, this in detail in the previous video. I will add labels to them as I have them here in the list of the beads. It doesn't have to be very nice, you will throw it away anyway. Uh, but they are important for you to orient yourself in the pattern and know what to do in each row. The green ones uh, will be without numbers. I will not cut the individual markers yet, I will cut them off gradually as I string the beads. Then we will need the beads of course, the exact colors, the individual codes of the colors are written directly in the pattern. Uh, of course you don't have to stick to them and use any other colors of beads. You just need to stick to the size 11O or 10O for Preciosa because the pattern is designed for this size of beads. If you used a different size of beads, you would also create a ball, but of a different size. And because I started offering kits uh, on my Etsy, I always test the pattern to see if it works as it should and if the amount of beads that I put into the kit is sufficient. So I weighed whether the amount of beads that I calculated corresponds to reality. When I sell the kit, I don't want it to happen that there will be too few beads that would be a big trouble. I always add some reserve to the kids, uh, usually in the range of 15 to 20 percent extra, in case you accidentally spill some beads. So this is actually the amount of beads for the whole ball and to label the beads I will use this sticky strip from the sticky notes. And according to this pattern I will write how the beads are labeled in the pattern B, C, D and so on. So I will write it here, cut it and stick it to the individual colors. So I know which color is which. Uh, for large patterns where there are a lot of colors uh, this is really useful. Then we will need a ball as a filler of course. Uh, this is a polystyrene ball with a diameter of 4 cm. It is never exactly accurate but we don't really care about tens of a millimeter. And then we will need some components to attach the ball uh, to the tree. I chose this bead cap in antique copper color and I will need an eye pin to attach it and some string to hang it. I will prepare the list of the beads. I take a piece of paper, uh, here I have an old business card and cut out a rectangle. I will use it to orient myself in the pattern. During the stringing I move it like this so I don't get lost in the pattern. 
take a bigger needle and thread it. This is a 30 weight thread. And as I said in the previous video, uh, the white beads are just for the background, so we skip them. Now here we have a uh, color B and number one, so we string one bead. We skip the white ones and one more B. One B. One B. One B. And one more B. I have six beads here. Uh, that will create one row. If you want to know where we are in the pattern, uh, it is the first six beads up here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we have the first pink marker. We are here. And then we will string BC, 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 and so on. And here we will encounter another pink marker. So I have the marker X plus one. I cut it out and thread it instead of a bead. And I continue. B. C. I skip the white ones. B, C, and so on. This will be repeated all the time. Because all the peaks of the ball pattern are the same. It doesn't have to be like that always, uh, but for this pattern it is. And I came across the second marker, X plus 2. And we will continue page by page until we reach the end. So I strung all the beads according to the list of the beads. From all these beads we will create a ball of about 4 cm. I take the end tail and I always start the ball with a magic circle. I wrap the thread around my index finger. I hold it here between my fingers. I take the hook. I insert the hook under the right thread. Pull the left thread and at the same time turn the hook to create a loop. Yarn over and pull through. This entail always points to where I have the working thread. Because we will use a turning chain in this pattern, I will make one more chain stitch. And I will start crocheting with the beads right away. I prepare the first six beads. I insert the hook inside, into the magic circle. Slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And again, I insert the hook into the magic circle, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop and pull through both loops. And we continue in the same way. The first row is quite unpleasant to make. The work is very tiny and sometimes unclear. But try to endure. And now I pull the end tail. I don't want to tighten it too much now. I can tighten it later. So I always crochet a few rows and then tighten it a bit more. Since I will be doing a turning chain, now I need to go back one step, so I have two loops on the hook. I insert the hook uh, into the loop of the bead. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook, like this. And then one chain stitch. And this is the turning chain. Uh, so this is what the first row with beads looks like. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's done. Now we came across the first marker. We have 0 plus 2 here. 
Uh, the first number means the number of bees that will crochet into separate loops. In this case, none. And we will just increase. So we will crochet two bees into each loop. And we repeat the whole thing six times because the pattern of the ball has six peaks. An important rule for the turning chain. Uh, now we made a turning chain and we crochet the next bead directly into the loop at the turning chain. Slide a bead down. Yarn over, pull through one loop. Yarn over again and pull through both loops. And because we are increasing, we insert the hook again into the same loop and crochet one more bead here. As I say, uh, the first row as are just a bit messy. Try to orient yourself in them so you know where to insert the hook. So now we will crochet two more beads into one loop, into the next loop. The next loop is this one. Slide a bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And to the same loop again, slide a bead down, yarn over, pull through one loop and pull through both loops. And again into the next loop. I crochet two beads into one loop. And the last three pairs. Two more pairs. If you survive these first rows, you have already won. It is really a tiny work, but the result is worth it. And finally, the last two beads. It is basically just about not getting lost in the, in the first two rows in those loops. Now I have the last bead of the second row. I insert the hook into the same loop, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one and stop. I will not do the last step, I would have to go back anyway, and I will make a turning chain right away. I insert the hook into the loop of the first bead of the second row. As you can see, I have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And do a chain stitch. And this is how I made the turning chain. Now I have 1 plus 2 here, that means that I will crochet one bead into a separate loop and then I will increase again. Uh, that means that I will crochet two beads into one loop. I will show you right away and I repeat the whole thing six times again. And again I insert the hook into the same loop where I made the turning chain. That means uh, at this light color bead, slide the bead down. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. So uh, this is how I crochet the bead into a separate loop and in the next loop I will increase. That is, I will crochet two beads into one loop. One bead and I insert the hook into the same loop and I crochet another bead. And again one bead into a separate loop and two beads into one loop. So we actually increase at the end of each peak of the ball pattern. And again, one bead into a separate loop. and two beads into one loop. And once again,
And once again, I was left with the last bead uh, in the row and I make a turning chain. I insert the hook into the loop of the first bead of the third row, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And a chain stitch. I think that with the third row we have overcome the critical limit. Uh, we have completed three rows and the orientation in the individual loops is definitely better. I think the individual loops are clearly visible. Uh, so hold on for two or three rows and it will be good. For the next row we have two plus two. Uh, that means that we will crochet two beads into individual loops and then we will increase. Uh, that means that we will crochet two beads into one loop. I will show it again for sure. Uh, we are at the beginning of the row, so I insert the hook into the loop or with the turning chain. I crochet one bead. And the second bead is also into separate loop. And I increase. Uh, that means two beads into the next loop. I insert the hook into the same loop and crochet the second bead. I have now crocheted two plus two, these four beads. A separate loop, a separate loop and two beads in one loop. And we are gonna do this again six times. So one into a separate loop, the other into a separate loop, and there's two beads in one loop again. So I think the principle should be clear. Uh, so I'm going to finish the whole part where I'm increasing or when I hit the green markers. Of course, if anything isn't clear to you, post in the comments. I read all the comments and I will answer questions. I will show you with a few more finished rows. Uh, you can see it's getting a better look. You can clearly see the six triangles, the six peaks, and we are increasing the corners here. I will show you the other side. Uh, we are increasing the corners here. And here you can see the turning chains, uh, they are in a row like this. We are always joining the row here. I will show you a bit more. And uh, now I'm going to start a row where I have six plus two. That means six beads into the separate loops and then two beads into one loop. If you look at the whole row, you can see mm, some consistency here. These eight beads form one peak of the ball pattern. And we don't have to count the other eight beads, but you see this group of beads is also the same. In some patterns, the similarity is more obvious, in others less so. Uh, it's not as obvious here, but you can still see it. And I will show you one more thing. I start crocheting. And uh, here you see that we have come to this corner. Here we have another corner, here too. In those corners we always increase, uh, that is we crochet two beads into one loop. Uh, when you have some experience you can see the things at first glance and you avoid counting beads and you can crochet basically automatically, you don't have to think about it. Now I see that when I get here to this loop at the light bead I will increase again. And I will show you one last thing. Um, I will just crochet to the end of the row. As you can see, I crochet quite loosely. I don't tighten the individual loops too much. It's not very desirable for the balls. If you tightened a lot, the ball would be a bit angular in some places. Um, the beads uh, would protrude a lot from the ball. 
It happens in the place uh, where we will switch from increasing to crocheting continuously without increasing. It usually happens when you tighten a lot, uh, so I want to avoid it. Uh, so, uh, now I'm at the end of the row. I have to crochet the last two beads, which I will crochet here into this loop. And here you can see that this bead is higher. Uh, so we basically join each row into a circle. One bead. Two beads. And now I make a turning chain and close the whole row with it. And by making a chain stitch, I get one row higher than the previous one. This is the difference from when we crochet in a spiral, which is the most common beading crochet, I would say. From time to time, it is good to check if there's any mistake in the pattern, uh, if the pattern fits nicely as it should. I sometimes check it because I don't look at the beads much while crocheting. I look here uh, at the loops from the inside. So, uh, I was almost at the end of the row and something unpleasant happened to me here. And I will show you right away how to solve it. Here I have a mistake. There should not be this dark blue bead here, but there should be this light one to create such a peak. There should be two light ones next to each other. I just forgot to string one bead there. What to do? I will unravel it. I go back one step, uh, so I have two loops on the hook. I cut a thread. I leave about this long and it doesn't have to be very long. I put it aside. Uh, now I take this end where I miss the bead. I thread a big eye needle. I string the missing bead. And I tie a new thread. I put this end forward like this. I take the working tail where I added a missing bead before. I put it here like this, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. I pull the beads down like this and I continue as if nothing happened. So I insert the hook into the next loop, slide the bead down, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through both loops. I need to fix the connection properly in place, so I crochet like this, maybe three beads. Great. And now you can see that I have these two threads here that I don't want here. So I pull them inside. I make a knot. And I cut off the excess end. It doesn't matter here at all, because there will be a ball inside. If you want, you can also drip the knot with some fabric glue or clear nail polish. I usually do it with a nail polish. And I just finished the row. So two beads into one loop. And turning chain. Now I have come across the green marker. And if you paid good attention at the beginning, you know uh, what it means. It means that we will not increase or decrease beads, but uh, that we will crochet continuously. I slide the beads along the thread, so I have enough thread to work with. It doesn't seem like it, but a lot of thread is consumed when crocheting with beads. I take off the marker 
and we are basically not dealing with anything here. And we will crochet one bead into each loop. And we will continue until we come across these pink markers. Then we will decrease, but I will show you that in a moment. Because I just made a turning chain, I need to insert the hook into the same loop again. I crochet one bead and then into the next loop. There is nothing difficult here, you will continue in the same way. Sometimes I just I just check if I don't have a mistake in the pattern and I forgot to emphasize that even though we crochet continuously we will still make a turning chain at the end of each row. I have crocheted all the middle rows. Uh, here I came across the marker X plus 10. That means that in the next row we will start decreasing. We will skip one loop and then crochet 10 beads, each into its own loop. But first I will do this, that I will get rid of this thread. I insert the hook in the middle and pull the thread inside. And I cut it so it is not so long. And because I will be decreasing beads in the next row, I will insert a polystyrene ball inside. This one is 4 centimeters. As you can see, it is a bit loose, but don't worry, this is how it should be. Each polystyrene ball may be slightly different in size due to variations in manufacturing. For this pattern I recommend using a maximum of 4.2 cm, no more because the beads would not lie so nicely together and you would have gaps between the beads. If you have a smaller ball it is not a problem, it can be easily solved by wrapping it in aluminium foil. I will show you how to do it. I wrap the ball to the maximum size of 4.2 cm. And now I will start decreasing. Uh, so I skip one loop and then crochet 10 beads, each into its own loop. And since we made a turning chain here at the end of the row, we should insert the hook here into this loop with the turning chain, but we will skip this loop. So here is the first loop uh, with the turning chain, which we skip. And here into this next loop we will crochet a bead. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and ten. And again, I skip the next loop and insert the hook into the second loop. So uh, here we have the current loop. We skip the next loop and insert the hook into this next loop. And again I crochet 10 beads. When decreasing I tighten a lot to pull those individual gaps together so that there is no thread visible. One. Two. Three. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten, and again I skip the next loop and insert the hook only into the second loop. And this is how I will continue until the end of the row. If you don't want to count the individual loops, I recommend preparing the number of beads for one peak of the ball in advance. In this row, it is now ten beads. I often prepare it like this in advance, uh, when I watch a movie while crocheting and I don't want to count the individual beads. Uh, so now I'm at the end of the row again, I have to crochet one last bead. Again, I don't forget to make a turning chain. I insert into the last loop, I crochet a bead and make a turning chain. I continue in the same way. And uh, now I came across the paper X plus 9. That means that I will skip one loop and then crochet 9 beads. So I prepare 9 beads. And I continue exactly the same as in the previous row. I skip the loop with the turning chain. I insert the hook into the next loop. Again, I try to tighten a lot. And I continue in the same way until the end of the ball. As you can see, there's just one last row to go. And I will show you the whole thing again. Again, I simply skip one bead. And again I finish by making a turning chain, so I close it all. I make one more chain stitch. This is what the end looks like. This is what the beginning looks like. And I will sew the end inside. And of course I cut it off. I think the ball turned out well. It looks very nice. And I will attach some metal components so I can hang the ball on the tree. I chose such a bead cap in antique copper color. I think it will match well. I open the eye pin with pliers. And it doesn't matter if you attach the eye pin at the beginning or at the end, it doesn't matter for this pattern. You can also finish it in other different ways, for example, you can put a flat bead cap inside which will secure the head pin. I will show you that in some other tutorial. This is what the result looks like. And I will also add a thread for hanging.
and the Christmas ball is ready. Let me know in the comments how you like it. And if you have already managed to make one this year, if you are planning to make one during the holidays, or on the contrary, if it's not your taste. If you want to support my creation, uh, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. You will help my channel grow and I will be able to make more and more new videos for you. Alternatively, if you are interested in premium content, downloadable patrons and more, check out my Patreon or YouTube membership. Happy beating and see you next time. Bye!